Article 16, Freedom from Exploitation, Violence and Abuse. This article begins with one comment highlighted in a panel. Violence against disabled people, there are very high rates, there are no services to respond to the abuse of disabled people, and currently very little work going on, despite the government saying that this is being included in the Sexual and Domestic Violence Work Plan. Violence against disabled people is not really on the agenda at all. Survey Respondent Introduction Article 16 requires governments to take all appropriate measures to protect disabled people from all forms of exploitation. This includes violence, abuse, and neglect related to a disabled person's gender, see Article 6, or age. The government must ensure that disability services are independently monitored to ensure that disabled people are not subject to violence, abuse, or neglect when using such a service. General Comment Violence, abuse and neglect of disabled people can occur in residential settings, in a disabled person's home, in an education setting or at work. Such abuse can be hard to detect and disabled people are at particular risk of sustained and ongoing abuse over prolonged periods of time. It is mostly disabled people themselves and allied organisations that raise issues of violence, abuse and neglect within the disability community. Such groups have precarious funding. For example, the Auckland Domestic Violence and Disability Group has disbanded as it was unsustainable as a volunteer group. Two international reviews reported that children with disabilities are almost four times more likely to experience some form of violence, with disabled adults being more than one and a half times more likely to be victims of violence than non-disabled people. End note 148. Current place of Article 16 in law and practice. Government-funded anti-violence and abuse programs have been, at best, slow to address issues of violence, abuse and neglect of disabled people, and many of them do not have accessible information or premises. In 2017, Parliament's Justice and Electoral Committee asked for submissions on the Family and Fano Violence Legislation Bill. The Chief Ombudsman made a submission with the following suggestions. End note 149. Care should be taken to ensure that where a disabled person receives personal care or support in their home, this employer-employee relationship is covered by the law in order for disabled people to be afforded legal protection where violence, abuse or neglect are perpetrated by a paid carer. Two clauses should be added to the definition of psychological abuse to ensure the bill further protects disabled and older people. End note 150. Financial or economic abuse, for example denying or limiting access to financial resources or preventing or restricting employment opportunities or access to education, and denying or limiting access to support, medication, communication or mobility aids or equipment that a person needs to be independent and or have a good quality of life. Protection orders should be made to be more accessible with regard to the format of forms and language used. The accommodation needs of disabled people should be prioritized when making protection orders and evidence of supported decision making should be required in the protection order process. The law should provide more means to safeguard adults who have care and support needs and who are experiencing or are at risk of family, whānau and or domestic violence as a result of those needs. For example, by making it an offence to fail to take adequate steps to protect a vulnerable adult from family violence. Committee's previous dialogue with the State on Article 16. The Disability Committee noted programs under the Domestic Violence Act 2013 to assist disabled people who suffer violence, especially women, girls and boys with disabilities. However, the Disability Committee was concerned that the 2013 Act was unclear as to whether it protected disabled people experiencing abuse in home care or live-in support situations, and whether the definition of a domestic relationship included relationships between disabled people and other resident service users, their caregivers and other support staff. The Disability Committee recommended that New Zealand strengthen these programs and initiatives to protect disabled people, especially those living in institutions, from violence and harm, and put in place a system to detect and respond effectively to cases of abuse. 
It also recommended that legislation, policy and practice relating to domestic violence covered disabled people in the domestic situations that they encounter. Comment on the realisation of Article 16 in New Zealand Bypassing the Family Violence Act 2018, which came into effect on 1 July 2019, the government has made some legislative changes to better protect disabled people from violence, neglect and abuse. The meaning of family relationship has been expanded to clarify that people in a carer-care recipient relationship may be included. The Act also recognises family violence as including the withholding of care, aid, medicine or a device or support or restricting access to employment or education. However, the Act does not make provision for the accommodation needs of disabled people when making protection orders, nor does it contain specific safeguarding measures to reduce family violence experienced by disabled people. New Zealanders continue to experience high rates of family violence and there is little data available with regard to how many disabled people are affected. Police collection of disaggregated data on disabled people's experience of violence and abuse would allow the IMM to monitor the situation more effectively. Recommendation The IMM recommends that the government 44. Develop a range of initiatives to ensure that disabled people experience the same protection from domestic and other forms of violence as non-disabled people, and that agencies identify and appropriately respond to abuse and violence directed at disabled people, including by a. Ensuring all government-funded domestic and anti-violence programs include accessible material for disabled people b. Increasing awareness of abuse experienced by disabled people and of the mechanisms to address it and providing sustainable funding for disabled people-led organizations working in this area. c. Increasing resourcing for disabled people-led initiatives to ensure there are better systems of recognition, prevention and rapid response to abuse. D. Ensuring that data collection by the police enables disaggregated data to be collected to allow for accurate recording and analysis of violence and abuse towards disabled people. And E. Ensuring people subject to compulsory detention on the basis of disability have ready access to trained advocates free of charge and ensuring advocates cannot be prevented from visiting clients on demand to act as witnesses to situations and conditions.